Hello everyone, this is Steven from the Even Steven channel and today we're doing a little bit of a comparison video, not necessarily a versus video or one where one has to win. <clears throat> we're going to take a look at the Smith & Wesson 625, which was made in 2006, and compare it to current production 627, made in 2023, should have been 2023, I didn't look it up, but this should be current year production. These are both end frame revolvers. Let's see what I got here. One is in 45 ACP. One is in 357 Magnum. Both cut from boom clips. These are both very similar guns. Basically, just the same guns in different calibers made a few years apart. So, we're going to take a look back to front that typically do, and we'll start with the grips. Now, unfortunately, these are not the original grips for the Smith & Wesson 625 JM. Jerry Mitchell edition. This should have wood grips on it. Does not. However, these grips, while an older example, appear to be the same grip that's on my 627. This is a little newer. It just seems to be more traction, more full. Um, this one seems to be getting a little beat up. Still works, but it's definitely been aged out a little bit. See that the, the the rubber is kind of bowing out a little bit at the top there. So we can't really compare that as well. By the way, if you want to know what it looks like, it would look more like this. This is not the original grips. These are current production Jerry Mitchell grips with a slightly different logo on them, but they, they would have looked like that. So we can't see too much by comparing those things. So let's go for, further a little bit. Let's compare the cylinder release. Those look about the same. So I noticed that opening this up, this is a little more sticky. This gun is just overall more dirty. And this gun just feels a little more smooth. Hasn't been shot as much. But this gun is getting starting to get gummed up with dirt a little bit. Wow. It, uh, this really needs a deep cleaning, which I have not done yet. However, the cylinder releases seem about the same. Let's take a look at these markings here. The markings here seem to be a little like lighter and kind of more delicate. This seems to be, this here seems to be more like engraving, or this seems to be more like paint that doesn't really go into the the metal very much. This is more like this is more like engraving. Let's look at the hammer. The hammer, hammer, and the trigger are both cast parts, and both kind of have these black this black oxidized finish to it. Finish to it. Which doesn't look very attractive, but it seems to be working very well. On the 625JM, the trigger is a milled part. Maybe not quite as wide. This is a very wide trigger right here. This is a more narrow, serrated, milled trigger. The hammer here is also cast, and it appears to be wearing a little bit on the sides. It's wearing against the frame a little bit. So while this looks nicer, this might objectively be better, these two. The double action trigger pull on this gun is just better. It just is. Double and single action. This is a little heavier. Although that wide trigger kind of makes up for it. That's actually really nice compared to that. Even though the trigger pull is lighter and smoother, the trigger face I think is actually better. Interesting. On this gun, we have fully adjustable rear sight. You have a white kind of U-notch and a, an orange front sight. On the 625JM, you have fully adjustable rear sights, blacked out rear, kind of a brass bead in the front. Interesting. These can both take an optic. They use the same optics mount. Now clearly, the 625 is a 45 ACP caliber revolver. And it only holds six shots. 627 holds eight, so two more. Is that worth you? This is 627-5. Uh, I assume that means generation. No one ever correct me on that. So I'm sorry, 620, yeah, 627-5, 625 eight. 627 dash five, 625 dash eight. This says Smith & Wesson 3.7 Magnum. It's got these, I, I think these are like cuts for, number one, weight reduction. Number two, cuts to go into a holster. 
these kind of rate reduction cuts here. The 625 kind of goes full bore, full lug, no attempts at weight reduction at all. It kind of looks nice. Which one do I like? I think I like the 627. I think because I'm more accustomed to this. Let's flip it over. You got the JM logo here. The the engraving, the letters here doesn't seem quite as neat. First of all, there's nothing here. It says Pro Series because it's the, it's, not, it's Pro Series, not Performance Center. The engraving of these letters here just look better on the 627. They just do. And the fonts here looks a little different than the font here. I think overall I like the lettering and engraving and this and that on the 627 better than the 625. That 625 is a bad gun. This is 45 ECP. Just the letters are bigger. The actual engraving of the, the letters and numbers doesn't seem quite as nice. For what it's worth, what's for it's worth. How is the machining in general on these guns? They're both pretty good. Both pretty good. I don't think anything is glaringly wrong with either example. Maybe um, there's a little less imperfections in the milling over here. It doesn't look quite as nice, but it's on the inside, so it doesn't count as much. Both night guns. Both of them shot a bit. Shot both of these guns today. Get inside there a little bit. These guns get dirty quick. Revolvers get dirty quick. This gun needs to be cleaned. Let's see, oh, can't see it as well. See this kind of scorching, scorching all over with this gun, man. This gun's getting dirty. So, uh, let's see. As far as accuracy goes, I don't really consider either gun more accurate. The 627 stays on target. In 38 Special, this gun just kind of stays on target so much easier. It moves so much less than this. So, if I'm shooting uh, 38 Special, that's 130 grains, going like 90 feet, I'm sorry, 900 feet per second. If I'm shooting 45 ACP, 230 grains, almost twice as much weight, going that same 900 feet per second. So this is going to have, assuming all the math works out, approximately twice as much recoil. I mean, not quite. 130 times 130 is, you know, 130 plus 130 is not 260. Sorry. My math is bad. Double this is still less than that, what I'm getting at. 130 grains times 2 is 260, so approximately twice the recoil. And it does flip a bit. You know, shoot this gun, goes 45 ACP is no joke. 38 Special stays on target very nice. Well, the trigger is not as good as far as smoothness. This extra wide trigger is actually quite nice. So I don't really consider either gun more accurate than the other. 45 ACP has more recoil. And if a gun has more recoil, it's going to be a little hard to shoot. So I would say that any difference in accuracy is my inability to manage the recoil of the guns. Uh, two problems that will come up with either one of these revolvers is there is a, um, a screw inside the grip here. It's over here. That puts pressure on the hammer spring. Make sure that's tight. And if you're using moon clips, which I haven't really shown. I only have my moon clips accessible. If you're using moon clips like this, these are TK custom moon clips for the 625. These are TK custom moon clips for the 627. Um, if these clips get bent out of shape, particularly bent out of shape, um, you will start having you might start having misfires. So, any problems in reliability is going to be either probably you know 90% chance. If you have problems with these guns, either it's the hammer spring screw or the clips are bent up. Otherwise. Well, say my kids are jumping around upstairs. Hope it doesn't bother you too much. So, in conclusion, do I have any anything to say? In conclusion, these guns were made, you know, 15, 20 years apart. Um, 
And honestly, it would be easy for me to say, oh, the 625 is so much better. Honestly, it's not. They're pretty much the same. Again, the machining on the 625 might just be a hair better, but also the engraving, the actual lettering on the 627 is better. So I, I, I applaud to, to, uh, Smith & Wesson for actually like making a good gun and like keep making a good gun. You know, sometimes any company has ups and downs where the quality dips down and then has to come back up. You know, Remington has done that quite a bit. Colt. Any company has, who has been around long enough usually has periods where their quality has dipped. And for the most part, it seems like Smith & Wesson kind of stays above that. Not to say they've never had a dip in quality or never been a ba bad decade. But in my general observation, it seems like Smith & Wesson keeps their quality relatively high for long periods of time. And if I had to choose either one, I would probably just choose the Smith & Wesson 627 only because it's, it's eight shots as opposed to six. And it's a more common or more... Um, yeah, more common caliber for a revolver. However, the 625 is not a bad gun. It's not. I, I consider them quite equal. They really are just the same gun in different calibers. Now, this is probably more of like a performance center gun. It has a lighter trigger, a little smoother. This is probably more like a standard. Even though they call this the Pro Series 627, there is no standard 627. So this is the standard 627. Despite the $1,000 price tag. Uh, I think that's the difference. You have like performance, uh, more of a performance in a trigger in this gun, or a better trigger in this gun than that one, and that's really the difference. And the hammer and the trigger are different materials. That's it. So anyway, this is uh, yeah. I don't have much to add at this point. Anyway, this is Stephen from the Even Stephen channel. Please do all like, share, and subscribe. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. And I will see you next time. Thank you and goodbye.